What if Ahsoka made it back to Coruscant before Order 66? That's our story for today. Hope you guys enjoy, and let's get right into it. Our story begins with the Republic Star Destroyer emerging from hyperspace. On board this Star Destroyer are many influential members of the Clone Wars, including Ahsoka Tano, Darth Maul, and half of the 501st led by Captain Rex. On Mandalore, Maul was caught much sooner than expected as his plans fell apart almost immediately upon the Republic invasion. And now, they were returning to the temple amid some of the darkest hours of the entire war. Ahsoka, Rex, and a few other members of the 501st ascended down to the Jedi Temple hangar in a transport with Maul still imprisoned in the Mandalorian vault. As they descended down, the sun was descending down on the planet, casting an eerie darkness over the capital city. And now inside of the hangar, Ahsoka was met by Jocasta Nu and a group of Jedi Temple guards. They would be taking Maul down into the temple prison, where he would be taken care of, and Ahsoka was left alone in the hangar with the distant sounds of Jedi mulling around. It was all so familiar, and she did miss the temple. This was her first time back since she left the Order, and Rex asked her if she would like to return to the Star Destroyer. Ahsoka took a moment to herself, and decided instead to go find Anakin. Right before he was captured, Maul was able to warn Ahsoka about something that was coming, something dark, and it all centered around Anakin. Part of Ahsoka's inner thoughts said that if she acknowledged these warnings, then they would become real, but she knew how terrible she would feel if she didn't find Anakin and something terrible happened, so she moved into the temple. Ahsoka walked through the halls and they were peaceful like usual, but there was still a feeling that she could not shake, like a shadow in the forest had overcome the temple along with the sunset. She moved into the meditation chamber to find Shakti, so she asked where Anakin was. Shakti didn't disclose everything that was going on, instead only telling Ahsoka that Anakin was in the council chambers, and he will very much welcome her presence right now. This was a curious thing to say, but Ahsoka simply moved on, walking a bit faster now to find Anakin. She could feel goosebumps beginning to crawl up her skin, and soon enough she was at the door to the council chambers. She took a deep breath, both excited and nervous to see Anakin again, but as the door swung open, the council chambers were empty. She could still feel Anakin in the Force, almost as if he were here just moments ago, and his presence in the Force was filled with anguish. Ahsoka looked around to each council seat, remembering each of the members, and how much each of them played a role in expelling her from the Order. Yoda, Obi-Wan, Mace Windu, Plo Koon, all who she did love and cared for, but all who broke her heart beyond true repair. She remembered walking away from Anakin here, and she closed her eyes, feeling for Anakin in the Force. And she did feel him. She felt the darkness, distant voices, almost echoes now inside of her head. You must choose. Screaming, lightning, what have I done? And Ahsoka opened her eyes in fear. Anakin was in danger. Something was happening. She could feel his presence across the city. She would go find him. She would save him. She had to. And so Ahsoka ran out of the chambers, sprinting through the temple now. Jedi were looking at her in confusion as she turned the corner to the temple hangar. She would get to Anakin and help him. He needs her. She finally entered the hangar, seeing a speeder, and the hangar door opened. Ahsoka got into the speeder and looked into the open air, and she saw three Republic gunships heading straight for the Jedi Temple hangar. Ahsoka froze, knowing something great was wrong. And then, it happened. The gunships all fired a missile deep into the hangar, and an explosion spread throughout the hangar. Ahsoka was slammed into the wall, and everything went dark as she was suddenly buried in rubble. Across the galaxy, clone troopers suddenly turned on their Jedi commanders without warning. Within minutes, thousands of Jedi were killed by the men that they fought side by side with every single day. The Sith won the Clone Wars. And inside of the Jedi Temple, Ahsoka Tano slowly woke up, hearing alarms, screaming, blasters firing, and fire was surrounding her. She was covered in rubble from ships in the hangar, and to her right and left there were Jedi buried with her. Most of them were dead, but two Padawans, a few years younger than her, were still awake, but scared. Ahsoka had experienced being alone and afraid, and now it was her turn to guide the young Jedi. She calmed herself with the Force, then looked to these younger Jedi. They were so afraid, but Ahsoka assured them that everything would be alright, they would figure this out, they would survive this together. And so, with a smile, 
Ahsoka guided them to lift the rubble with the Force together. Once they were finally safe from underneath it, Ahsoka once again assured them that everything would be alright. But not a moment later, blaster bolts pierced their hearts of both Padawans, and Ahsoka watched the both of them fall dead together. She ignited her lightsabers, just in time to deflect blasts back at whoever shot them, and Ahsoka deflected the blasts back at her enemies. But to her surprise, the ones shooting were Captain Rex, Jesse, and other members of the 501sts. The deflected blasts killed Jesse and the others, while Rex had his blast scrape his head. He was alive, but unconscious. Ahsoka couldn't believe what she'd done. She couldn't believe what the clones had done. What was going on? Why did they shoot at her? She deflected them out of her own safety, but she didn't want to kill them. And now Ahsoka stood in between a group of dead Jedi she assured would be okay, and a group of clones she loved that just fired upon her. It was a nightmare come to life. No, it was worse. This was worse than anything she could ever have imagined, and she stood here in complete shock for what felt like forever. But soon enough, more clones entered. Ahsoka had to act, and so she dodged and deflected the blasts, flipping over them into the main area of the temple. The clones continued firing at her, and she realized that it was either clones die or Jedi die, including the innocent younglings here in the temple. So Ahsoka made a choice, flipping into battle, taking out clones as they moved on the Jedi. She had no idea why the clones were doing this, but they weren't hesitating at all. This was kill or be killed for every Jedi in the temple. On one end of the temple stood Ahsoka Tano, a beacon of light guiding younglings to safety, aiding masters and knights in their desperate fight. Her presence alone gave the Jedi some semblance of hope, even if it was all for nothing. Perhaps the temple was destined to fall, but Ahsoka would do everything in her power to keep it safe. But on the other side of the temple was a man engulfed by darkness, with one thing on his mind. Power. The power to save the one he loves, and his master, the Sith. Darth Sidious gave him the secret to unlocking this power. He must become power itself. And power can be gained through the dark side. So now Anakin Skywalker moved with an unreal ferocity through the temple, cutting down Jedi after Jedi. Some he recognized, some he did not. All he knew was that in each of these Jedi stood in the way of peace. Not just peace for the galaxy, but peace for his own mind. Nothing would stop him from saving Padme. Nothing. No one. He moved through the meditation room, cutting down Shakti. He moved through the temple holding cells, cutting down Jocasta Nu and Darth Maul. He cut down masters, knights, padawans, and then he moved into the council chambers, cutting down younglings. And as he killed the last one, he tilted his head slightly. He felt someone familiar. Ahsoka. Ahsoka ran through the temple, helping Master Keller and Beck escape with a youngling, the same species as Yoda. She watched him go, wishing the best and she then had to grab at her head. She felt something in the Force, something familiar, yet terribly different. Anakin. And on the center bridge of the Jedi Temple, light and dark converged as Anakin and Ahsoka walked towards each other in the middle. Ahsoka could feel that Anakin had changed, become something far worse than she could have thought. His eyes carried a strong determination, and Ahsoka called out to Anakin, asking desperately what has happened. Without stopping, Anakin said that she wouldn't understand and he swung down at her. Ahsoka flipped backwards, and she truly could not believe it. Anakin just tried to kill her. Blaster fire, death, destruction surrounded them. The temple was being destroyed. Ahsoka tried once more to call to Anakin, to bring him back from whatever this was, but it was no use. Anakin spun and struck, and now Ahsoka locked lightsabers with her former master. As he said, Anakin Skywalker was weak. I destroyed him, just like I will destroy you. There is no other way. And Ahsoka felt a sadness overcome her as she said, Then I will avenge his death. And the duel began. Anakin lunged forward, his lightsaber slashing through the air with deadly precision, and Ahsoka swiftly moved her own lightsabers, meeting his attack with a perfect defense. The clashing of lightsabers echoed through the bridge, a haunting reminder of the bond they once shared as master and apprentice. Ahsoka fought with agility and grace, her dual lightsabers twirling as she tried to push back her former master. She didn't want to fight him, but he'd come become a danger to the entire galaxy. The Anakin she knew would want her to take this version of Anakin down. And Anakin, fueled by the dark side, attacked relentlessly, each strike carrying the weight of his newfound allegiance to the Sith. The bridge became a battleground, the Jedi symbols on the walls witnessing the tragic conflict, 
unfolding within the temple. And despite her skill, Ahsoka would soon find herself on the defensive. Anakin's strength was overwhelming, he was still much more powerful than her, and the conflict within him only fueled his power. Sparks flew as their lightsabers clashed, casting an eerie glow on their faces, each revealing conflict emotions of sorrow, regret, and determination. The battle raged on, the two former allies locked in a struggle that mirrored the larger betrayal occurring across the galaxy. Ahsoka desperately tried to reach the Anakin she once knew, pleading with him to resist the darkness. Anakin, however, remained unyielding, his eyes devoid of the warmth that once defined him. The bridge echoed with the clash of lightsabers, and the Force itself seemed to weep at the tragic scene unfolding. But in the end, the power of the dark side proved too strong, and Anakin's relentless assault overwhelmed Ahsoka. With a strike, he disarmed both lightsabers, leaving her defenseless. And now, as Ahsoka lay on the cold floor of the Jedi Temple, she looked up at the face of the fallen hero she'd once called Master. Anakin Skywalker, now Darth Vader, stood over her, his expression masked by the cold detachment of the Sith. Inside Anakin's head, the darkness clawed at him, telling him that the only way to save Padme was with power, and to get the power, he must give himself to the darkness. And so, Anakin did it. He pushed his saber into the floor, through Ahsoka's chest. And with a gasp, Ahsoka felt her life begin to fade. She looked up at Anakin and said, I'm sorry I couldn't save you, then fell back, dead. And Anakin stood above her body. The dark side voice in his head began to laugh with pure evil, and it faded away. And Anakin was left completely alone, with only his own Padawan beneath him. The Padawan he swore to train and protect, Ahsoka. He killed her. Anakin fell to his knees, picking up her body. It was like something washed over him, something revealing, some clarity. He tried to force heal her, tried to bring her back, tried to apologize, but it was no use. She was gone. Anakin sat here in complete sorrow for what he has become. Striking down Ahsoka was supposed to help his descent into darkness, not stall it. Anakin tried to call upon the darkness again, but he couldn't. He was a shell of himself, completely broken. He knew he could strike down Obi-Wan, Yoda, Windu, anyone, and this wouldn't happen. But striking down Ahsoka, his Padawan, it ruined him. And he sat here, holding Ahsoka's body for so long, and soon the temple was filled with the echo of clone troopers and fires. But Anakin heard nothing. He was in his own head, cursing himself for what he became. He knew the truth in this moment. He was sent here for one reason by Palpatine, so Padme would never love him back. Anakin realized the truth, realizing he was manipulated from the start. Padme would never accept what he has done. Any future with her was over. Because of Palpatine, this is what he wanted. And soon enough, as Anakin sat here holding Ahsoka, the raspy voice of Palpatine sounded from behind him. The Sith Lord told Anakin that he did well, saying that he could feel Anakin's anger, that it gives him strength, focus, and determination. And Anakin had enough. He would avenge Ahsoka. He would avenge himself. He ignited his lightsaber, pushing it towards Palpatine. But the Sith Lord expected this. He felt Anakin's betrayal from so far away. So he blasted lightning at Anakin, laughing, calling him weak. Clone troopers began firing at Anakin to defend their leader Palpatine. And Anakin was hit in the shoulder and the thigh. But he stayed standing. He locked eyes with Palpatine, telling him the Sith have no place in the galaxy and he pushed the lightning back with all of his strength. This final push created a huge explosion, killing Palpatine, killing all the nearby clones, and killing Anakin. Now they all lay dead in the temple, along with the Jedi Order. Hours later, Obi-Wan Kenobi and Grandmaster Yoda were walking through the temple. Bail Organa brought them here, and now in an emergency senate meeting being led by Mas Amida to announce the death of Chancellor Palpatine. It was being reported that he was killed by the Jedi, and so the clone troopers around the galaxy executed their Jedi commanders for treason. The Republic would stand with a new Chancellor as the war was coming to an end, but the Jedi would no longer be welcome in the Republic. In the temple, Obi-Wan and Yoda came upon the bridge, where a single clone trooper stood alone. Kenobi called out to him, and it was Captain Rex. When Ahsoka deflected the blast across his head, it fried Rex's chip, and his mind was freed. And now he looked down at Anakin and Ahsoka, Kenobi and Yoda asked what happened, and Rex was silent for a long time, before telling them what he decided the truth should be. 
Anakin and Ahsoka died together, taking down the Sith Lord. The three of them would mourn their fallen friends. And in time, the Republic would rebuild and unify without the Jedi Order. Padme would give birth to twins Luke and Leia, surviving, thinking that Anakin died to protect the Republic, to protect the Jedi, thinking that he died killing Palpatine, and from a certain point of view, she was right. On Naboo, she would raise these children with the help of an old friend, Uncle Ben Kenobi, along with her own family. They would not be Jedi, but perhaps instead follow the footsteps of their mother in politics. Yoda would go into exile. For as long as he was alive, the Jedi would be alive. And he accepted that when he dies, perhaps the Order dies as well. In time, new religions of the Force would rise, as both the Jedi and the Sith would fade away. And folks, that is our story for today. I know it's another shorter one, I'm gonna, you know, be honest, I'm currently in the process of moving, so, you know, just, I love putting stories out, and I don't want to stop them for like a week, so, just a few minutes shorter than usual, but I still absolutely love this one. I wanted to do one that was just sad all the way through, basically. I know Fantasy Folklore and Penty Patrol actually teamed up for something like this a while back, and Anakin turned back to the light side in that story, and, you know, it was a happy ending. I wanted this one to be sad, I wanted Anakin to fight and kill Ahsoka, and then when he strikes down Ahsoka, a sort of clarity wash over him as he realizes that everything he's doing is wrong. I think Ahsoka could have that type of impact on him, and yeah, I wanted to do it, not in a way that Ahsoka brings him back while alive, but rather dies, and it's just the worst ending for everybody, pretty much. Everyone except for, I don't know, the Republic as a whole, but the Jedi die, the Sith die, the clones lose, you know, everyone loses, basically. Palpatine especially though, you know, Anakin's final moment was still a sacrifice for what was good. Anyways, let me know what you thought. I know you guys usually like happier endings, but I do a lot of those, so wanted to change it up a bit today. Alright, thanks for listening, appreciate you. New video probably on the first, but I am moving on the first, so we'll see. Thanks a ton, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.